It follows logically that heliolatry was significant to the survival of mankind long before their competence to build temples aligned with the precise moments of the sun's position at significant times of the year. Lockyer wrote, Don. Aster. Page 319, both at Anu and Thebes, therefore, before the temple of Amenare at the latter place became of importance, the sun was worshipped in a temple pointed neither to a solstice nor to an equinox. It seems, then, that the suggestion that possibly sun worship existed before any great development of the solstitial solar worship is amply justified. Some people claim that much of the symbolism regarding the sun is a modern hijacking of circumpolar symbolism being reassigned. These claims have been made about nearly every famous solar archetype, from Apollo to Mercury, Hermes, Jesus, and even Mary. It's always based on nonsense though, and it is easily debunked by asking for inscriptions. For example, if one knows language, one can ask whether or not grano, granus, signifies the sun. This is used by the Celts in the form of Apollo grano, which, if you've studied Celtic, you recognize the word for sun laid up in it, the name Apollo grano literally translating as Apollo the sun, Apollo sun. Or there are accounts, from the 16th or 17th century, of people calling Mary the star of the sea, which is the result of a transcription error. You can look up the Vulgate for yourself and you will find nowhere in Bible is Mary referred to as the star of the sea. I've addressed it ad nauseum. However, it doesn't mean that these ideas aren't in the historical record. They are there, but they're wrong. The following is not something I agree with, or even disagree with, but the purpose of me bringing it to your attention is so that you can have a resource to show others how these ideas entered the historical record in 1893. Lockyer brought up the possibility of the Temple of Mutt allowing Gamma Draconis to be seen along its axis about 3200 BC. He then claimed that Spica would be seen along the axis of the rectangular temple at the same time. He may be correct in his calculations and claim that the temple system was the worship of men, otherwise read as Amsu, or Kem in ithophallic mummy form. He suggested that it was associated with a harvest home festival on May 1st. Amplitude of the temple, 17.5 degrees north of west equals declination, 15 degrees equals sun's end declination on May 1st. Based on his suspicion that the Spica Temple and the associated Mutt Temple were founded after 3200 BC, Lockyer wrote, I.B. page 319, M. Vyri makes us acquainted with the politics of the Theban priests, or rather of the confraternity of Amen which they had founded. Notices de Principox Monuments Exposés au Musée de Guise, page 260, 1983. From his account of the confraternity and of the various attempts made by it to acquire political power, however, we gather that it was not only intended to intensify the cult of Amenare at the expense of the sun worship previously existing at Thebes, in the Spica Temple, but that one of the chief aims of the confraternity of Amen was to abolish the worship of Set, Sit, Sut, or Sutek, that is, as I think I have proved, generically, the stars near the North Pole, and, as it can be shown, in favor of the southern ones. The Temple of Mutt was the chief temple at Karnak in which the cult of the northern stars was carried on, and this was associated with the Spica Temple, so both these temples had to go. We can now realize what the Theban priests got Thothmus to do. They were strong measures, since in his day, the cult of Spica, the solar disk, Aten, Min, Chem, and Gamma Draconis, the Hippopotamus and Lion Isis, was supreme. The little shrine of the Theban Amen was enlarged and built right across the fairway of the Temple of Mutt, so that the worship was as effectively stopped as the worship of Isis, when it was prohibited by law, was stopped at Pompeii by the town authorities bricking up the window by which the star was observed. The little temple of Isis at Pompeii and the associated frescoes in the Naples Museum are well worth careful study, especially with regard to the arrangements made for the stellar observations and their final stoppage by the drastic proceeding referred to in the text, and the evolution of Horus in Greek times. The hippopotami are most carefully drawn. I've touch upon the fact that Eusebius admitted the ancient Therapeuti, from Egypt, were Christians, and their writings became the Christian Gospels and Epistles. The following claim by Lockyer will highlight the power that the priesthood had over the nobility or royals. 
He wrote, I.B. page 321, in the time of Thothmes, 3. The alliance between the royal and the sacerdotal power was of the closest, and in no time of the world's history have priests been more richly endowed than were then the priests of Amen. He even spelled Ammonius, also known as Ammon, the way it was attached to Jesus, the Amen. He continued, I.B., not content, however, with their sacred functions, they aimed at political power so obviously that Thothmus IV and Amen Hetep III, to check their intentions, favored the cults and priesthoods of Anu and other cities of the north. This is fascinating because, if true, it shows how easy it is for the powerful to become powerless at the rising of a priesthood or secret society in their culture, and how pervasive these orders become, which motivated Amen Hetep III and his son, Amenhetep IV, to look for alliances out of Egypt, entering into diplomatic relations with the princes of Asia, according to Lockyer. Since I entered politics, I have chiefly had men's views confided to me privately. Some of the biggest men in the United States, in the field of commerce and manufacture, are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. Woodrow Wilson, New Freedom Lockyer wrote, I.B., this brought him and the priests to open warfare. He replied to their anger by proscribing the cult of Amen, and the name of Amen was effaced from the monuments, still the priestly party was strong enough to make it unpleasant for the king of Thebes, and, to deal them yet another blow, he quitted that city and settled at Tel El Amarna, at the same time, according to the statement of M. Vyari, reviving an old Heliopolitan cult. He took for divine protection, the solar discaton, which was one of the most ancient forms of one of the most ancient gods of Egypt, R.A. of Heliopolis. Gizeh Catalog, 1893, page 63. I have no idea about the dating of these alleged events or if they're historically accurate. But supposing the historical record we have access to is remotely accurate, we can see a pattern of every decent country eventually being taken over by cults or secret societies, and nowhere is it more prevalent than in Western culture right now. One can appreciate how the reckoning of the common era is evidence that occurred in the Mediterranean around the 3rd century AD. To dive deeper into the evidence that supports my conclusion, read the Spirit World series and the Real Universal Empire. Become a member to access the rest of this article.